now for your starting lineup. From King Philip in goal, wearing number 30, Chang Homer. At defense, number six, Mike Gurdle. At defense, number 10, Garrett Maxwell. At left wing, number 20, Gavin Maxwell. At center, number 11, Colin Cook. At right wing, number seven, Ryan Fitzpatrick. And now for the Brockton Boxers, in goal, wearing number 30, Nathan Petty. At defense, number six, Zach Silva. Gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome into AZ Arena for a Saturday matinee. It's the King Philip Warriors, the Brockton Boxers going at it. The Boxers having quite the year so far. They come in for the first time in a long time with a real chance to have 10 wins on the air. They're well on their way. I'm Matt Dog, Matt Nelson. Joined alongside my broadcast partner, the not so newly named after the Brockton High School, Mr. Kevin Caro. Mr. Caro, this team's looking good this year. Yeah, and um, like you were saying, Matt, I mean, the first time in a while that they've zoned in on 10 wins, and now that New Bedford doesn't have a team, that's really the only way we're going to qualify is by points or, or hitting that magic number of 10, and uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. Well, we've got quite a scoring race on the boxers tied for the team lead. Zach Sylvia, seven goals, seven assists, 14 points. Frank Aiton, eight goals, six assists for 14 points. And for the Warriors, they come in at five and six. The guys to watch are number nine, Chris Daniels, sophomore forward. He's got eight goals on the air. And Colin Cook, the senior, five goals, five assists. 10 points, the Warriors wearing their away green jerseys with white and yellow trim, the Boxers in the Ottawa Senators jerseys. I like this. Off white, red and black striped down stomach and white trim around the black numbers. First time all year they have pulled out these jerseys. The Warriors coming off a 5-3 victory over North Attleboro. That game on Wednesday night, so a couple of days off in between. And our boys went down to Quincy on Wednesday night, and they won 3-2, so. Oh, just talking to Coach Cunningham before the game, he just said that they're just doing all the little things fundamentally, just protecting the puck, and... Uh, not allowing the other team to put too many shots on net. 
starting goaltenders. Nathan Petty for the boxers. Oh, got taken down by his own guy. Petty has played just shy of nine complete games. The 2.83 goals against and an 8.66 save percentage for the Warriors. It is Shane Frommer, the senior goalie. He's played six in two periods. He's got a 3.9 goals against and an 8.77 save percentage. Nick Landry up the wing, dumping it in. It goes a little bit too far. Icing against the boxers. Yeah, Nick said he was going to score a goal for me today on the way in. Get a hold him to that. <laughs> Get a hold him to oh, that. Oh, don't think I won't. So how did the conversation go? Did he see you? He Mr. saw Carole, me. I'm scoring one for you today. I saw him out in the lobby on my way in. He goes, hey, thanks for coming to the game today. I said, Nick, you know I have to be here. He goes, oh, I'll score a goal for you then. Wrapping this game, wrapping up a busy week for Brockton Community Access Sports. Crazy week. Crazy week. Tuesday night over at Staff Gymnasium, the Brighton Bengals came to town to finish off their end of a back to back. They played Bridgewater Raynham on Monday. This shot, good save by Frommer. Yeah. Bridgewater Raynham on Monday, that game went to overtime. Brighton came out on top. They came in, I think, a little bit tired on Tuesday night to Staff Gymnasium. And Brockton was able to pull out the overtime yeah. win. Back-to-back -back overtime games for Brighton. Yeah, That's it's just good scheduling the on the athletic director part, making sure you catch Brighton sure on the back, -to -back. back to back. He almost pulled it out. Brockton winning it overtime. And then Friday yeah, but, night, the Trojans came to town. Basketball edition of the Cape oh, Cod Cup. We have a boxer slow to get up. That Peyton Sylvia slowing it up. And he's going to try to skate it off. Uh, he's a hockey be player. Seamus Sheehan. Bridgewater Random on Friday night. Basketball edition of the Cape Cod Cafe Bowl. Yeah, and, the, and we'll just have the girls versus BR again on uh, this coming Friday. Just kind of worked out that way. We did the same thing with Barnstable and Hoop, where we had the boys and girls play opposite weeks, and now this week with uh, BR. That game got close at times. Yeah, I think it was tied at it was one tied point. It was tied 62-62 at one point in the fourth quarter before Brockton turned it on, and then Brockton was up by seven with 3.3 seconds left, and BR called a timeout and still kept trying to win with... Three seconds to go, this one. Oh, my brother-in-law is the JV coach over at OA, and he was down five this week with um, seven seconds to play, and they ended up tying it up in regulation and winning in overtime. Wow. Six save Petty, and he covers up for the face-off. 11-13 to go in the first period. Next week, the game everyone's talking about as if Brighton wasn't enough, we've got Cambridge, Rins, and Latin mm -hmm. coming into Staff Gymnasium. And that should be a dandy. Yeah, that, that, that should be a real good one. And the thing you have to remember is last year, almost to the day, um, Brighton beat us by Killed 50 us. in our own gym. It was 100 to 50 was the final. And when, then we went up to Cambridge, and they ended up beating us by 30. So I'm just really excited to see what Tuesday night brings us. King Phillip with it. Not much offense from the boxers as of yet. Icing against the Warriors, Gavin Maxwell not able to catch it in time. No real good scoring opportunities for the boxers as of yet. No. A 
few and thank, shots, but and thank you for my Dunkin' quality. Donuts. Doc roast. Cairo runs on Duncan. Anybody who's watching, Dark Roast regular, hot. Any, it's any as close or sporting event will get you in for free. <laughs> as close to Starbucks as I can get without going to Starbucks. Crazy sports weekend in the New England region. UFC 220 tonight at the Garden in Boston. A couple of title fights on the card. Yep, and I will, I will be there. I'm very excited. Jealous. Championship Sunday tomorrow. Pats and Jaguars going at it. And I'm waiting to see if there's one, one extra ticket with my name on it for tomorrow for the Patriots game. That'd be a great phone call to get. Aiden, nice move. The boxer setting up in the Warriors zone. Uh, Sylvia with the launching a shot and a goal. Oh. Max Sylvia as he was falling to the ice. Nice. And the boxers are on the board with 9.43 to go in the first period. Here he is, pound for pound. In my opinion, the best athlete in Brockton High School right there. So he now is tied for the goals lead on the boxers in sole possession of the points lead with 15. Of course, the last time we said that, Frank Aiden put up a hat trick. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Aiden with two hat tricks on the got three on, on two here. Don't want to give it back. Shot deflected away nicely by the boxer defense. Oh. One timer, excellent block by number 13 out, Birmingham. Now Crookshank off the boards, and Landry through the neutral zone up the wing. There he is, Nick promised me a goal. I'm still waiting. Increased playing time for Nick Landry today. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. And uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And a goal. Unassisted and, to and number just seven. just like that. That is Ryan Fitzpatrick, his third goal on the year. Talk about it, an important answer goal right there with nine minutes to go in the first. Let's see if the boxers can answer back quickly and regain the lead. Boxers in all sports do not like to play from behind. No. Except the soccer team. Except the <laughs> soccer team. <laughs> they weren't too worried about it. Tie up in... Peyton Sylvia is going to win the race to the half boards. Now it's Aiton. Bridges forward of the goal line. Teamed up by three Warriors. And King Phillip able to get it through the neutral zone and clean entry before Crookshank comes away with the puck. Justin Crookshank, a co captain. Now Frank Aiton is going to lose the race. It'll be an icing against the boxers. I think Justin's grown two inches since last year, too. I mean, he's he's huge. What do they have him listed as? I'm just curious. Do they have height and weight? I'm going to say at least 6'4". At least. I thought he was I thought he was north of six feet. Well over six feet last year. Hayden Sylvia trying to come up with a breakaway. Unsuccessful number 25, Kyle Gray, preventing the boxer's opportunity. Hi. 
Interesting upcoming schedule for boxers hockey. Some time off. About a week off before the next game. What are they home? Yeah, they're home here next Saturday, same time, 2 o'clock. And you're going to have to have a new broadcast partner because I will be next door supervising a wrestling quad. So Mrs. Savas will most likely be over here to take my place. I'm real excited. We get to host the um, South Sectional Division I wrestling tournament uh, of February the 10th. So I was at the meeting out at the MIAA yesterday, and um, our very own Cole Wyman, two-time state champ, is the person who they put on the travel bag tag for every wrestler that comes in. Hope it's not like the Sports Illustrated cover jinx, but he would be the first person in Brockton history to win three state titles if he's able to continue on. The wrestling team has really come alive under coach Deshaun Fentress. Who is also a former state champ, him and Mark Mendez in the same, same class. That was probably the most interesting event that I've ever covered. We went up to Methuen for, a, it might have been the state semis a few years ago. And I had never played by played wrestling, <laughs> never called wrestling. I don't watch wrestling. Get a call on Friday afternoon, hey, you're going up to Methuen tomorrow. Oh, it's, okay. it's, it's intense. I mean, it is super intense. Boxers are going to go on a power play here. Number 10 for the Warriors. Garrett Maxwell, junior defenseman, in the box for two minutes. One of the Boxers wrestling alumni gracing us with his presence here today. Mike the Postman Simmons. <laughs> Tripping the call on Maxwell. Oh. KP sending it down the what river the? at the start of the power play. Sylvia off the boards for Bridges. Back to Sylvia. Boxer is going to take some time reset. Really, all the boxer sports have had a, I call it a resurgence in the last three or four years, really. Oh, good sh good shot. Cross country team going down to, na a track team going down to nationals in New York last yeah, year. Yeah, and they're actually at uh, the Yale Invitational in New Haven right now. And I had word that one of our kids, you know, sixth place down at the Invitational, but still the number one time in Massachusetts. It's pretty good. Yeah. Of course, the boys' soccer team, state champions. Yep. Basketball, boys' basketball looks like they could make a lengthy run in the playoffs. But I think our baseball team's going to be surprise a lot of people this year too. Oh, what a hit on Peyton Sylvia! Oh, he's gotten drilled twice. <laughs> the boys got him once, and then somebody just got him there. Jack Coulter on the hit for KP. Now Sylvia's shot off the glove of Frommer. Let it fly. Let it fly. Yeah, oh, there we go. It was deflected out in front. Nice. Sylvia sent the initial shot in. It'd be interesting to see if there was a tip on the boxes on that, but Sylvia either going to get a goal or an assist is he has two points on the day 30 seconds remaining on the power play when that goal went in four and a half to go in the first period boxers are up two to one
Oh, we got possible two on one break here. Here's Landry. Oh. Good shot blocked away, sliding down to the ice. So oh, Landry off the crossbar. <laughs> Jalen Bridges credited with the goal, assisted by Zach Sylvia and Frank Ayton. Uh, Nick Aiton Landry was looking back. for a breakaway. So what's the trade-off here? Landry gets the goal. He just gets bragging rights. Just bragging rights. That's all. He got crushed into the boards. It takes a second to shake the cobwebs out. Landry looks like he's favoring his right arm. Oh. Landry is now going to come to the bench. Yeah, he's hurting. Yeah, Landry is hurt on the bench. He's skating over to the bench, grab for his head. Oh. Great scoring chance there. And I don't want to use the word collapse, but he kind of fell into a sitting position on the boxer's bench now without his helmet. So Nick Landry is out of commission for the time being. The fair is a head injury is KP, the deflection no good by Luke D'Amico. Boxers are up two to one, 2.45 to go in the first period. The goals won by Bridges, won by Sylvia. Patrick, the lone King Philip goal. Now the trainer is going to check out Landry. And he does have his helmet back on. Possibly a couple of injuries to Landry. He got crushed up against the boards. Was favoring his right arm. And then about 30 seconds passed. He came to the bench for a change, held his head. Scary situation for the sophomore forward. Two fifteen to go in the first period. This one deflected by Sheehan. Gavin Maxwell. Now a foot race is going to be won by King Philip. Excellent work by Zach Sylvia. To edge Maxwell off the puck. Now Sylvia spinning with it. Nobody knew where it was. Sylvia comes up with it. Now it's X Sylvia on the boards. Over to Sheehan, backhanding it out. Seventy-five ticks to go in the first period. Two-one boxers over the King Philip Warriors. And Nathan El Shami now with an opportunity. His backhanded shot is up into the protective netting, and he went sliding into the end boards. 
he gets up a little bit gingerly, favoring his entire left side. to go in the first period. It's 2-1 boxers. Looking to add to that lead, Zach Sylvia with it. Now Sylvia after a nifty backhand pass along the blue line by Crookshank. This one all the way around for Justin Crookshank. Spun through the slot, nobody on the receiving end for Brockton. King Phillip comes away with it, now 15 to go. A slap shot, and this one might have got off the blocker of Petty. The rebound attempt by number 11, who whiffed on a Connor Cook, and the boxers take it out. As the buzzer sounds, the first period has come to an end. It's two to one boxers, an encouraging first period by the boxers. The thoughts and concerns are with Nick Landry. No, he's good. I mean, I went down, I think he just got the wind knocked out of him. He, he took a big hit down there. The trainer went and checked him out. Everything seems good. So he'll be back second period. He still owes me a goal. <laughs> so two one boxers, what did you see in the first period that you like from the boxers? Um, a lot of things. I mean, they four checked very well. Um, you know, obviously, putting up two is a good, great start. And um, like I said, I mean, they don't allow a lot of shots on Nathan, which is a good thing. It's 2-1. The Brockton Boxers over the King Phillip Warriors at the end of the first period. We're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you second period action right after this. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma, too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort... Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son. It's always worth it. Whoa, master! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's <laughs> life. Take time to be a dad today. I am going to get you. I'm going to get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming! We're going bucket! Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey. I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in. Because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into AZ Arena for second period action between the King Phillip Warriors and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner, Kevin Caro. It's two to one Boxers over the Warriors coming into the second. The concern at the end of the first was the sophomore forward, Nick Landry, who appeared to have a head injury. It looks like he just got the wind knocked out of him. And he is back on the boxer's ice as Nick Land uh, boxer's bench, excuse me, as Nick Landry dives on the puck for a faceoff. Two boxer goals, one for Jalen Bridges, one for Zach Sylvia. Sylvia assisted on the Bridges goal, as well as Frank Ayton. As this one shoots up into the protective netting. 
Sylvia's now got eight goals, eight assists on the year for 16 points. Eight, and eight goals and seven assists. Lone Warriors goal, number seven, Brian Fitzpatrick. King Philip wearing their away green jerseys with gold and white trim. The boxers in their alternate jerseys, the off-white, red and black stripe, white trim around the black numbers. Pad saved by Petty. This one to the end glass number 16 for the Warriors. Will Connor with it. Sending it back to Kyle Gray. Gray back to Connor. A couple of players hit the ice. The arms stay down. And King Phillip changes out all five skaters. Landry spun around. Now deflecting the clearing attempt and El Shami trying to get to it. Instead it squirts out into the neutral zone for Zach Sylvia. Sylvia popping it to Birmingham. Now El Shami deflecting it in. Peter Sylvia crushed as King Philip able to clear out. Offsides waved off as King Philip tagged up. And now El Shami with it. El Shami shot blocked away by Mike Curtin. And the boxers change out their forward line. Brendan Palermo gets crushed. Now Birmingham to Sylvia. Sylvia with some space. His shot deflected wide. And KP comes away with it. Back into shot blocked away. There's going to be a penalty upcoming against the boxers. And it is Brandon Palermo headed to the box. Palermo on the box for two minutes. <laughs> Tripping the call against Palermo. The boxers have it in the KP zone, however. Rockton sending it down the river again. Crookshank blasting this one down the ice. Bridges lost an edge, and now it's the lone goal scorer, Fitzpatrick, all the way down, and an icing on the power play against the Warriors. One twenty-five left on the power play for King Phillip. 10.37 in the second period. The score remains... Two to one, boxers over the Warriors. That's Fitzpatrick. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Welcome back. 
That's going to be a penalty. That should be a little cross check. Number six, uh, Mike yeah. Curtin headed to the box, and he's going to go after Frank Aiden here. And the refs put an end to that one fairly quickly. Oh, wait. Here it comes. They're going to be. Getting offsetting. Oh, that's a little. I don't know if I agree with that. Going to see either a cross check or roughing against Curtin, and I think it's going to be unsportsmanlike against eight. So it remains five on four in favor of King Philip for the next minute. And then the boxers will get one back and it'll be four on four. With the offsetting, it would be five on five. I'm confused. I know I'm getting here late to the dance, but um, there's five kids from King Philip and they just had a penalty. Offsetting, no loss in manpower. Huh? So with offsetting minor penalties, there is no change in Shouldn't manpower. Shouldn't it be four on four? If two are in the box, why do they get to keep five out there? I don't quite understand that. They were on a power play. Oh yeah. Then it should go. In and, with, and with the offsetting penalties, there's no loss of manpower. Oh, it should go four, four it's on three. Like a, it's like a fighting penalty in. Oh, but you should have base. two people in the box, in my opinion. Four on three. Open it up a little bit. I agree. What it should be, what it is. We all know MIAA rules are the best. 16 seconds left on the KP power play, and then it will be even strength. A shot blocker oh. saved Petty. Rebound to the half boards. And sent all the way down. Will count as a shot. And Peyton Selvia with a whole head of steam, forcing KP's goaltender, Shane Frommer, to cover up for the faceoff. Back to even strength. And one of the things that I was talking about would be the ultimate for soccer. I'm not a big fan of the whole overtime and then you, everybody goes into stall mode and then it's decided by penalty kicks. So you go a 10 minute period and after every two minutes you lose a player. So it comes down to a little chess match with who do you keep out and once if somebody comes That's out cool. they can't come back in. And it just is more strategy, open up the field to play a little bit. Kind of like what the NHL did with the overtime. Would they go three on three? I think they went the wrong way with that. <coughs> the whole, the goal of that was to reduce the number of games with decided shootouts. in a shootout. They don't want to extend the games too long because then you've got the seven o'clock games running into the West Coast games and a whole bunch of different scenarios. Kids getting home late. They've got school the next day, whatever. So I think you, you add the equivalent of one period. You have five on five overtime for 10 minutes. If nobody scores, then it's you go tie. four on four for five minutes, and then you go to a shootout. Oh, that's a long day. You think about the playoffs, it's endless overtime. It is. And we, the first game in the cup final back in 2013 went into triple overtime. Yep. Bruins and Blackhawks. Luckily, the bar stayed open past 2 a.m. for that one. <laughs> By the time I got home that night, it was 3:15. I think it prepared. I think that would prepare the teams a little bit better for the extended overtime that can happen in the playoffs. I know it's only 15 minutes. I also think you, you see more of a chess match of who you put out. You put out the scoring lines yep. and the, the staunch defenders. You got people playing longer minutes, more scoring opportunities. Oh, oh. 
was Ben Martin. Now Crookshank, this shot blocked away by Fitzpatrick. Palermo down low, he gets shoved down from behind, the arm stayed down. Stick save Petty. Out to the blue line for number six, and he becomes the hitter instead of the hitty on Martin. And that was oh. Mike Curtin. Maxwell with it. Over to his brother, Garrett Maxwell. I got super confused. I looked at the roster. I saw number 20 and number 10. Oh, Garrett nice and play. Gavin Maxwell. Brothers. Offside. 6.47 left in the second period. Two to one boxers. He's had a majority of the chances so far in this yeah. period. Peyton Sylvia oh. shot. This one is high and just a bit wide. Bridges comes away with the loose puck. Glove down, but losing an edge is number nine. Number nine's hurt. Yeah. Chris Daniels, a non-contact injury. Uh, he's hobbling over there. He can't put any weight on his right leg. So Daniels on the bench. Sophomore, the leading scorer for the King Phillip Warriors. Nine goals, uh, excuse me, eight goals, four assists, good for 12 points. Time for the boxers to capitalize. Peyton Sylvia losing it, and King Phillips got numbers up ice. It's five on three. The puck goes to Aiton, and Brockton back the other way in transition. Bridges loses it, and number 18 grabs it. Rocco Biancully. Five twenty to go in the second period. Put a shot on net. Nope. The boxers in a fire change. Uh oh, we got. <laughs> got we got a <laughs> skate caught up in a glove. <laughs> Calling for a penalty is Crookshank, who thinks he was purposely held up. Uh-oh, am I rocking the camera? <laughs> Doing a bad Irish jig. A little bit of history. So the dropkick Murphy's shipping up to Boston just came on the PA system. Excellent music choice here at AZ Arena. Yeah, for the most part. For the most part. So UFC 220 tonight in Boston. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, 2013. UFC's first fight in Boston in nine years. Yeah, I'm surprised because Dana White has a lot of ties to this area, and I am a little surprised that this, it's been nine years. Nine years from when UFC returned. They've been back twice since 2013. Okay. But that fight, I think it was 197? Or 176, I think. Conor McGregor's first fight on U.S. soil. In Boston. In Boston. 
crowd went nuts. It was a wild night. And then anybody I talked to said that the the heavyweight fight tonight it was oh, it's huge. Wonderful. Stipe Miocic trying to defend his belt. You've got Daniel Cormier who does not deserve the belt in a light heavyweight co-main matchup. Stacked card, two title fights is big mm -hmm. for any UFC card, but to not have two title fights in Vegas is a very bold choice for the UFC. I in just one of the smaller arenas. And I couldn't get over how much tickets were. I mean, I w wanted to go and I looked into buying tickets, three, 350. And that's just going through Ticketmaster, never mind going through StubHub or Ace or any one of those. UFC, definitely one of the more exciting live sports to witness. If you guys ever get a chance, definitely do it. Back in oh, oh, and oh. Landry almost had one. Oh. Landry playing with a B under his bonnet tonight. Still owes me one. Now oh, lo losing an edge. Man, there's, there's been a lot of that today for both teams. Palermo. That's a blue line for Crookshank. Crookshank tees one oh, up. Almost and tipped. Blocker saved by Frommer. Fabulous ice surface here at Easy Off Arena. Man, I've seen more kids just falling down tonight. Between periods, we saw someone working with a shovel in the boxer's face-off dot as Petty makes a glove save. Two eleven left to go in the second period. It remains two to one. Boxers over the Warriors. So, what do you think about Patriots tomorrow? Is Brady hurt? So, I, I discussed this a little bit last night during the Bridgewater Random basketball game. Brady's not hurt. He's upside. He cut his hand slicing avocados or something. No, they said he cut it on a helmet. Said he cut it on on, on top of a helmet, and he has four stitches. Four stitches in his throwing hand. That's why fine. he's wearing a glove. He'll be fine. On his thumb. Wearing gloves to all the press conferences. I think it's. One of those mind games that the <laughs> Patriots like to play. Petty grabs one on his chest. Brady's fine. I like the Patriots by 10. I think it will be 31-21. Okay. The Ve later game, I think, will be much more exciting. Well, Vegas has it at, what, 9.5 is the line? On the Pats. Something like that. It started off at 7.5, worked its mm -hmm. way up, I think, as high as 11. Yep. And what about last week? Crazy. <laughs> Vegas <laughs> Vegas got screwed. Oh, and there's a goal good. for King Phillip, tie ball game. <laughs> That's what you don't want to see. A minute left in the period and just kind of lose some mojo going into the locker room. But... They'll bounce back. Two to two, a minute and 13 left to go in the second. Boxers got lackadaisical in their own zone. Yep. So we gotta explain how Vegas got screwed last week. Specifically in the New Orleans Vikings game. Oh, come on. The goal, Gavin Maxwell, assisted by Mike Curtin. 
So the line of the Viking Saints game five is and five and a half points. So in order to cut Minnesota was favorites. Yep. And in order to cover the spread, they would have had to have win by six or more. The touchdown, the 61-yard Minnesota miracle. Stephon Diggs, fabulous reception. Put the Vikings up by five. By rule, they had to kick the extra. <laughs> they had to attempt a PAT to yep. finalize the game. And on the extra point attempt, they took a knee. They took a knee. So they didn't cover the spread, oh, no. and there's a breakaway last second. A oh. shot and a goal as the buzzer sounds. It's going to count. Oh, man. Well then, the boxers giving up two goals in the last minute 15. This one, I think, was Maxwell again, Jeez. who's got behind nice. the defense, and that's not the way to end a period. It's 3-2 going into the second break. Uh, you can see KP coming in with a little extra bounce in, the, in their step. So it's 3-2, King Phillip over the boxers at the second intermission. That goal, Ryan Fitzpatrick is second of the afternoon to give KP a lead going into the third period. The boxers are gonna have to come out swinging for the final 15 yeah. minutes. Again, three to two at the end of the second period. King Phillip now with the lead over the Brockton boxers. We're gonna step aside, take a short break, and bring you third period action right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. More will talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education, what are you going to do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you going to make of yourself? What are you going to make of me? Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into AZ Aff Arena for third period action between the King Phillip Warriors and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside my broadcast partner, the athletic director of Brockton High School, Kevin Caro. It's three to two Warriors over the Boxers. King Phillip scoring two goals in the last minute 15 of the second. And here's number 11 for the Warriors, Colin Cook, trying to get another scoring opportunity for KP. Unsuccessful. Jack Sylvia lays out curtain as the boxers have an opportunity. And a good save by Frommer.
KP goals, two from Fitzpatrick, one from Garrett Maxwell. For the boxers, one for Zach Sylvia, one for Frank Aiton. Uh, excuse me, Jalen Bridges. Aiden dumping it in, heading to the Brockton bench. Shot, glove save, Frommer. So Boxers with a couple of shots right off the bat here in the third. Not the way, Mr. Caro, they wanted to end the second period. No. Terrible way to end the period. And they held off a couple of attacks, up 2-1 going into the third, and all of a sudden you're chasing one. Like I said, two goals in a minute 30. Peter Sylvia behind the Brockton net. Seen some interesting changes to high school hockey at AZ Afarina this year. In addition to now two minute minor penalties, we have a warning track along the boards, the red oh. paint all the way around the ice. We're gonna have a penalty against KP here. Elbowing is gonna be the call. And it's going to go against. Is that what 10. that is? That's a warning track? Because when you're skating full speed, yeah, I'm gonna be looking down. The boards, you're gonna be you're gonna be looking down. It's not like it's all highly visible either. It's, it's almost like a pink. Sylvia launching a shot, stick save from her, rebound attempt, a diving stick save by Frommer. Well, see if they can get something right here. This would be a nice thing. Maxwell in the box for ah. elbowing as the puck squirts all the way down the river. Frank Aiton to retrieve. Noticeably not looking at the warning track as he ices the puck. Speaking of warning track, with only two weekends of football left, it's almost spring training, almost there. The snow is melting. JD Martinez, five years, $100 million contract offer from the Red Sox, mm -hmm. what do you think? What do I think? I think it's a good move to get a right-handed power hitter in, in Fenway. I think they've made a, you know, a lot of mistakes going after left-handed power with, you know, starting with Adrian Gonzalez. I don't think people realize how far that right field bullpen is. I mean, it's an app, it's, it's a bomb. It's, but I honestly said that if, um, who the heck did the Yankees just pick up? Giancarlo Stanton. Yeah, he would have hit 60 in Fenway. Oh, it would have gotten ugly with him. You, you talk about records, he, he would have had it easy. And him being in the same division, coming to Fenway 10 times a year. But now I take a look at that Yankees lineup with Stanton, Judge, oh. their catcher. I mean. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> that's as good as it gets. Shots, oh. big save, and it's oh, I think somewhere he, underneath Frommer. I don't think he really saw it. The Red Sox need more than one piece. They need more than just Martinez to contend with that absolutely nasty roster the Yankees have. Well, I like the fact that they signed Moreland to a two-year deal. I mean, I think that he's he's 
solid defensively and you know better than average offensively. Mitchy P two bags. Um, Pedroia is the great question mark. I don't know how he's going to recover from surgery. And he, he breaks down. I don't think he's going to give you the 140 games like he usually does. Bogarts, I think they have a new uh, hitting coach in that's working with, with him right now in the offseason. We don't have to worry about the panda anymore. <laughs> Who is their third baseman? It was uh, Eduardo Nunes. Okay. And then who's the new, yeah. No, who is the kid that came up? Uh, Rafael Devers. Yeah, that's who it was. And if, if they put some serious time in, into his hitting technique, he could be a force. He can, he can hit the ball a long way. I think their outfield, if they were to trade any of them, I think that would be a huge mistake. I like so that's the thing. Everybody's telling me the Sox are going after Stan. The Sox are going after Stan. And I said, no, not seriously they're not. They're no. not going to pay a designated hitter $25 million a year. No. And he's not replacing Andrew Benintendi. No. Nope. He's not replacing Jackie Bradley Jr. And he's not replacing Mookie Betts. No. And if I were the Red Sox brass, I mean, I would try to lock those guys up before they get to free agency. With another penalty on King Phillip, this one on Kyle Gray. Oh, come on, you gotta go top shelf on that. Another save by Frommer. Five seconds. I think they sent in the closer PA announcer. <laughs> Bottom of the ninth inning. <laughs> Kyle Gray for tripping in the box. Ah. This one uh -oh. sports out foot race. Won by the boxers. So everyone's telling me before Stanton was traded to the Yankees. The Sox are going after Stan. The Sox are going after Stan. He said, absolutely not. Yeah, it would be cool having such a power hitter on the Red Sox. Not going to happen. No. And by the way, shout out to ESPN for making major breaking news that Andrew Benintendi got a haircut. haircut. <laughs> that is journalism right there, folks. Sylvia ripped down from behind. The arm stayed down. Sylvia's looking for a call and now drawing with the ref, which is always a great idea. It's Zach Sylvia. Forty seconds left on the penalty to Gray. KP able to clear but not out. Now Sylvia has it down low. He is. Having his stick held big time. And this one sent all the way down to Nathan Petty. There's our good friend, Officer Vaughn. You want to get him up here for some color? I've asked <laughs> all the school police in the past. They've all turned me down. We had a uh, we had Reese up here one time. Oh, did you? His kid plays on New Bed. Uh, was it New Bedford or Durfee, maybe? He said, come up here and talk about his skills. Eight minutes to go. King Phillip up three to two over the boxers. Peyton Sylvia with it now, headed towards the KP net. Blocker save, Petty, rebound chance. He's blocked away to the end boards oh. and two boxes laying the boom on number 13 who gets up Connor Cook and he is not happy. I could feel that over here. Little wake me up, Saturday afternoon. This one's behind Frommery, lost it. 
Boxers unable to capitalize, seven minutes to go. And KP with a chance. Backhanded shot deflected away by Crookshank, who one hands it up to Landry. Who still Landry, owes me a who goal. Who still owes you a goal. He's had a couple of excellent opportunities. It's very convenient that the boxers just so happen to need a goal. And Landry still owes you one. He does. I'd like to collect. This is your song, Matt. This is my jam. Chelsea Dagger by the Fratellis. The Chicago Blackhawks goal song. Is that what that is? That nobody, like everybody had heard it, but they never knew where from. So it's the Chicago Blackhawks goal song. I knew song. this from a beer commercial. This was Amstel this is a Lights. Phenomenal drinking song. Oh, and they had the World Cup, and Amstel was the sponsor. That was, that's the, the song that they used. So it, it started with Brockton popularity back during the beginning days of soccer season when I was oh the DJ. Boy. Here's a breakaway, a two on O for a KP. A shot and top shelf. Yeah, there's nothing he could do about that. Absolutely nothing he could do. That's Joe Bosselli in a pile up for KP. Bosselli with the goal. I believe it's number eight, Luke D'Amico on the assist. And it's four to two KP with six. 13 to go. Hayden Sylvia having his stick held by Fitzpatrick. Will Connor credited with the assist. Do you know what I wish would make a comeback as I was looking at the hockey socks? The hockey pants. Back from the late 90s. I was a big fan of the hockey pants. Yeah, like snow pants. With the stripe down With the, the stripe. side. Yep. So Brockton, two goals in the holes. Oh, and Sylvia it. rips one in. Okay, we're right back at it. Sylvia off the post and in. 5.39 to go, and we've got ourselves a finish. When I asked him when I was down on the bench checking on Nick, I go, do you have another point in here? And he said, absolutely, and there it is. Now, if Nick can be a man of his word and get me a goal, we'll be all square. Now, this is where they cannot get sloppy. And, I mean, we've seen it. They have a little mojo going, and then they just they they just have to remain aggressive. Bridges going at it with Luke D'Amico. We've got quite the scoring race for the boxers. Sylvia just took the lead, nine goals on the year, to Frank Aiton's eight. Sylvia now with 17 points to Aiton's 15. Keep in mind, folks, and those keeping score at home, Jack Sylvia is a defenseman. Oh, oh, oh. This oh. one between the pillows of Frommer and a little shoving match. Little flow rider of Florida. One loose. Oh, there's a lot of a lot of bodies right out in the crease. Keep it in. It is on sides. Come Luckily, on. there's no video replay. Four and a half to go. Boxers down by one. It's four to three, King Philip. But the boxers definitely putting some pressure on. Oh no. Opportunity back in oh. shot. Stick saved by Petty. He's gotta he's gotta catch that one. 
I know that Shane Standy has been working with them quite a bit. They, I guess that they dedicate a good portion of practice where he just works with Shane and making a nice glove save there, yeah, was flashing good. the leather. 4 all one to go, defensive zone face off for the boxers. Here we go, three on two up ice for the boxers. And the right people to have in the offensive zone, Aiton as Bridges loses an edge. Fire it up. Out to the blue line for Sylvia, he rips one. Loose, and blocked away by a couple of bodies in front. And KP able to clear out. Three and a half to go, Brockton trying to grab the equalizer. We need Nick Landry to step up. Jalen Bridges with some space to oh. shot. Juicy rebound. rebound. Oh. oh, what a glove oh, oh, save oh, by oh, Crawford. Oh, oh, oh. oh, I saw that going in. If we're going to go down and talk to Coach Cunningham and say, listen, Nick Landry's got to play the, re the rest of the three minutes. <laughs> Landry's had a number of good opportunities today. This one goes for an icing, 2.55 to go. The three goals, two from Zach Sylvia, one from Jalen Bridges. For the Warriors, two for Fitzpatrick, one for Gavin Maxwell, and one for Joe Bosselli. El Shami line is on the ice, along with Sylvia and Crookshank. Peter Sylvia and Nick Landry. This one deflected away by El Shami, taken by number 13, Connor Cook, for the Warriors. Cook's going to chase it down on the half boards, two and a half to go. One hand to El Shami, backhanding it before he got sent head over heels by the Warriors. Crookshank recovering behind the Brockton net. Crookshank to Landry, Landry sweeping it to Peyton Sylvia, broken up by the Warriors. Net has come off its moorings. I was wondering if there was a penalty, there was a stoppage. Hey, wouldn't you love to have that minute 30 back in the second period? Or just a do-over. Oh, yeah. Even the last five seconds. Puck crossed the line with one second, if that, left in the period. This one dropped down, sticked away. Hand pass against the Warriors, the faceoff. Okay. Going all the way down with a minute and 35 to go in the third period. And Brockton, first of all, you gotta send out your Patrice Berger on here. You yep. gotta send out Frank Aiden. And he is going to be the one to take the faceoff. He's gonna win it back to Zach Sylvia, who immediately. I think they're gonna the call one. a timeout. Brockton does indeed call their timeout. You win the faceoff, you empty the net right here. So with this timeout, I want to thank our cameraman for today's festivities, the one and the only Mike the Postman Simmons, yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. <laughs> it's 4-3 King Phillip over the boxers with a faceoff coming in the KP zone. Off of a hand pass. I can't believe all the activity that's here today. I mean, they had a laundry list. I mean, this game after game. I think they go until at least 9 o'clock tonight. 
AZF's got it stacked, of course, the home arena of Olive Rames. Stoughton High School along with Brockton. South Shore Conference, a bunch of midget leagues play here. That's crazy. Join us Tuesday night over at Staff Gymnasium for what is promising to be a classic Cambridge, Ringe, and Latin. The Falcons of Cambridge, Ringe, and Latin against the 11-0 undefeated Boxers. Yeah, we're hoping that maybe we can get the band, part of the band, just 10 pieces of the band in. Give us the drum line. I'll take anything. The drum line and three trumpets. Yep. Petty is at the hash marks with Brockton struggling to gain oh, clear come possession. On, boys. KP has it. That, yeah, that. That's going to ruin that idea. Yeah. It's Patrick and his two goal afternoon as Crookshank takes over. Crookshank weak around the boards looking for Peyton Sylvia. One minute left to play in the game. One minute One to go minute. as Bridges out into the neutral zone. Petty's looking towards his net as Zach Sylvia picks it up, stops and able to get around one of the Warriors, now El Shami. Come on. Peyton Sylvia, and here goes Petty to the net. Uh, oh, the no. Bench. Here he comes. This one loops high in. Empty net, four by six hole, six on five scores. Oh, what a great Excellent play. Excellent save. It was a Sylvia shot oh. loose and unable to get on the rebound. But El Shami, this one, oh, I, that, thought, I thought that hit the netting. It definitely hit the netting. It's still moving. <laughs> they do not stop play. There's 10 seconds to go. The boxers have to fire a shot off. Oh, they had a, just they a great get chance. Oh. This one out into the neutral zone. Five seconds to go. Oh, that's too bad. Buzzer sounds, and the boxers minute and 30. Leave a tough one to the King Philip Warriors oh. who scored two goals in the last minute and 30 of the second period. It's four to three your final score and that is a tough one. Oh that is a tough one. And they had chances at the end of the game. I mean really when they just pulled the goalie there they had a nice scoring chance and that's too bad. They played well. They definitely deserved better than a 4-3 loss. They're back at it next Saturday, 2 o'clock, puck drop right here at AZ Offerino. We'll have it for you on Brockton Community Access. 4-3, to three, your final score. Mr. Carroll, your official predictions for tomorrow. Tomorrow, I like the Patriots by, I'm going to say conservative. I think it's going to be a lot closer. I'm going to say 28-24. What about the later game? Later game, I like Minnesota. Um, we'll go 21-10. 21 10. All right, I'm going Pats by 10, Eagles by 3. Ooh. Because the NFL doesn't want Minnesota to have a home game. <laughs> 4 to 3, your final score. King Phillip over the Brockton Boxers. For everyone here at BCA Sports, our cameraman, Mike the Postman Simmons, my broadcast partner, the athletic director of Brockton High, Kevin Cairo. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Go Pats, and we'll see you next game. Head coach Chris Cunningham. Chris, a tough one, but a battle all the way. Yeah, battle all the way, uh, but I, th I thought, uh, you know, we uh, we got really got outworked in the second period, and uh, I told the guys that it was unacceptable, so we kind of put ourselves in a hole. Uh, King Phillip played well, you know, they deserve the credit, uh, but I didn't like the way that we played um, as far as uh, hard work and uh, the one-on-one -on -one battles. Game comes down to 90 seconds at the end of the second period. Talk about that stretch. Uh, you know, we had uh, we had a little pressure, and then uh, you know it, it was chipped out, and we could have kind of. I thought we could have made a, a better play on that puck, and uh, you know to give them give them that with four seconds left, that's hurts. You know, so they went in with all the all the momentum. On a positive note, you've got quite the scoring race on your hands for the team leading goals and points. Zach Sylvia now owns the record with nine goals on the year, and 17 points. Aiden falling behind, eight goals and 15 points on the air. Talk about those two guys. Uh, well, both those guys have done a lot of scoring this year uh, for us. And, uh, you know, Zach played really well today. He had a broken skate blade, and uh, no one would have known. You know, he, he battled through it and uh, made adjustments and, you know, uh, made the key plays. He scored all three goals. So 
Um, you know, especially the one that he scored uh, was right after he uh, kind of misplayed a puck when they scored. Uh, and he came right back and, and, you know, showed mental toughness and scored a goal. So, um, you know, he, he battled out there. I thought, you know, um, just we needed a, a strong team effort, and I didn't think we got that today. Petty had a, a good game in net for you guys. Talk about his performance today and Frommer on the other side. Um, you know, Petty's doing a better job of battling for the puck. Uh, earlier in the year when, when there was loose pucks, you know, around his crease, he was sort of uh, timid to, to go and get them, and he's doing a better job of finding those pucks getting them out of there, you know, and not giving them extra opportunities. Um, and then on the other side, you know, he made some key saves. Uh, at one point during the third period there, we had a two-on-one, and uh, he made a really nice save, a real nice glove save. So uh, he, was, he was solid for them. Coach, thanks. We'll see you next week. All right, thank you.